Word of the Lord. I was remiss in acknowledging our First Lady. Amen. Let's clap our hands for her. We always love to acknowledge her presence and thank God for her leadership uh, as she serves here in our church. Amen. Amen. I want to get right to the Word. I'm not going to be before you long. Uh, on today. Amen. We'll all be done by 1.15. Amen. And be ready. <laughs> yeah. Y'all say he got jokes. Amen. Now I'm going to get you out so you can go to the Strawberry Fest. I thank God that you came, that you logged in. Amen. But we're going to go. Amen. To the word of the Lord. I told uh, Trinice last night, I said, you know, I don't have a very long message. I said, I should only be about 12 to 15 minutes. She said, boy, stop lying. Amen. <laughs> She said, you can't do nothing for 12 or 15 minutes. Amen. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. If y'all say amen, it makes me preach faster. Amen. amen. St. Mark chapter number one. St. Mark chapter number one. I love my church. Amen. St. Mark chapter number one. We started, if you were here on last week, thank you, Jay. We started, uh, we started a series entitled, You Can't Quit Now. Amen. Let's personalize that. Can you say that out of your mouth? Say, I can't quit now. now. Yeah, I can't quit now. If you missed the uh, first teaching uh, last week, uh, I want you to go back on YouTube uh, and I want you to uh, review that message. Some of you right now are in the spiritual warfare that takes place when uh, we are tempted to quit. Amen. Others of you, before this year is out, uh, you're going to need this message because there's going to be some things you want to take your hands off of that God is encouraging you to hold on. Amen. So look at your neighbor and say, this is your word. This is your word. Yeah, this is your word. St. Mark chapter number one, I want to read uh, this into your hearing. And this is what it says. It says, that evening, I'm reading from the NIV version, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick, and all the demon possessed, the whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also, he working, drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. The Bible says very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place. Do you see that? Where he did what? Pray. 36 says, Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Jesus, everybody is looking for you. To which Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. This is why I have come. And the Bible says, so he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. I wanted to land right there in verse number 35. It says he got up early the next morning while it was still dark, left the house, and went to a solitary place. I, I want to talk for a few moments from that particular verse, this one word that I believe is for every person that's in here today, and it's simply entitled, unplug. Everybody say that, unplug. unplug. A few weeks ago, while we were uh, in the midst of our Wednesday Seek Bible study group, our virtual group, just nod your head like you know, like you log on and you say, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we were in the midst of our group and we were having an amazing time there studying the Word of God. And uh, right when we, we were about to make a very important point, I mean, the Spirit of God was just moving. We were teaching the Word. Um, my Wi-Fi dropped. So some of you might remember that. My Wi-Fi dropped, and, and, and uh, Minister Ebony, who, who shares the, 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 the group with me, had to finish up the call because my Wi-Fi dropped. And I was, I was 38 hot that my Wi-Fi dropped. Right at the point when, when, when I was about to make a very, very important point. And, and, and when, I, when I called to see what should I do, amen, the tech support here at the church, which is Minister Ebony, and... Uh, <laughs> 
She says, Bishop, you know, what you need to do is, right, because she's an engineer from LSU. She has an MBA. She's accomplished. Uh, she has all of these accolades. And, 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 and she told me, Bishop, what you need to do, this high-level stuff right here, she says, unplug your motor. I said, now, Ebony, come on now. I need some, you know, I need you to log into my computer and then figure out what my, you know, rate is. He said, just unplug your modem. And, and, and I, I, I didn't even do it, y'all. I didn't even do it. I didn't even unplug it. I said, no, there's something else. I, I said, I probably need a new laptop. She says, you don't need no new laptop. She says, go unplug your modem. And you know what I did? I unplugged my modem. I plugged it back in. And my Wi-Fi started working right, I ain't had a problem since. Just unplug the motor. And I was a little embarrassed that I couldn't figure it out by myself. I got two degrees too, amen. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And so, and so because I was embarrassed, what I did was I had a conversation with my Wi-Fi. <laughs> me, me and Wi-Fi had a conversation. I said, Wi-Fi, why you played me like that? Like, I'm, I'm right in the middle of this live stream, and you just drop like that. And Wi-Fi said, well, let me tell you what happened. Wi-Fi says, all day, every day, people are pulling on me. Yeah. Wi-Fi said, everything in this house depends on me to keep running. She said, Wi-Fi, I call her she. She said, five cell phones depend on me running. Five or more TVs depend on me running. Two Xboxes depend on me running. Your laptop, your wife's laptop, your children's laptop, all depend on me running. The security system in the house, the cameras, all depend on me running. And, and Wi-Fi told me, she says, and you know what's worse? When y'all get visitors that come over, they ask you, what's the Wi-Fi passcode? And you don't even think about me. You just give them the Wi-Fi passcode. And now people that don't even live here got to depend on me to keep running. Me and Wi-Fi talking, and Wi-Fi said, bro, I get tired sometimes. Everybody always pulling on me and always depending on me. And Wi-Fi said, I'm sorry, but every now and again, I just need to shut down. And it was talking to Wi-Fi that I got this revelation that just about everything will work again if you unplug it. Just about everything. Oftentimes, our desire to quit a thing comes from our inability to rest from a thing. See, and there are a number of things that can make us tired and fatigued and weary and it causes us to want to quit something that God says, no, you just need a break, you need rest, and you need to unplug. Th this week in our church, we unplugged. We unplugged because some of you don't know it, just like Wi-Fi, but there are people behind the scenes that's making the church move and run and do things and they're waking up early in the morning and having meetings and they, they've been here this morning since 7.30 this morning to make sure everything was set so you could come and receive the word of God and the worship experience. And so we said we're going to unplug this week so that we'll have time to reset. We'll have time, watch this, to rest and to recuperate. Because there are a number of things that can make your soul tired, but none more than wounds that are not healed and souls that are not rested. I want you to hear this today. Because you can become toxic on the inside because you have wounds that are not healed and souls that are not tired, that are not rested. I'm talking to some of you in here today. God told me you would be here. That He says it's just April and you haven't unplugged at all, all year. And he wants to give you a warning sign because when your soul gets tired, you make some bad decisions. Look at your neighbor and say, God says unplug. God says unplug. God says unplug. It, it's, it's important for us to unplug, especially in this culture, because we are conditioned to surround ourselves with noise. 
we have this addiction to incessant activity, a frantic pace, electronic leashes that's always pulling on us. Notification of this. I was in worship just a moment ago and got distracted. My phone started vibrating, told me Tiger Woods made a triple bogey on hole number five. See, we are always connected, and it's no wonder that silence and solitude are rare commodities in our world, especially for those of us in here today, and I know the people that I pastor who are driven and ambitious and go-getters, you despise dead time because you believe dead time is unproductive, that dead time, no, our bishop, I'm a go get, I'm a hustler, I go get my, no, God is saying you better learn how to shut it down. See, too much noise and too much activity can be toxic for your soul, and our culture has not learned how to unplug. When you go to the doctor, and the doctor tells you that you're sick, the first thing the doctor tells you is go home and get some rest. Go home and shut things down because watch this now, there's a healing rhythm that happens when we learn how to rest. It's why God instituted the Sabbath. One of the reasons is that he says you work for six days, but on the seventh day, you have to learn the rhythm of rest. Because in the six days, there's been so much pulling at you and so much coming at you that in the seventh day, the day of rest, watch this now, that you are to heal from everything you poured out. See, solitude is so important and significant, and we haven't taught the significance of solitude even to Christians modern day because solitude is a part of your weekly worship. Solitude requires, write this down, it requires being present when we are used to just being productive. Solitude requires of us listening when we're used to talking. Solitude requires us to be quiet when we're used to noise. Solitude requires stillness when we're used to busyness. Solitude requires and demands that we go internal when we're used to just being external. Solitude requires us, and I'm going to show you this in a moment, facing who we are when we're used to projecting who we want people to think we are. When, when you learn how to get quiet and get in a still place and, and embrace solitude, you can begin to learn some stuff about yourself. Because to be tired on the outside is one thing, but to be weary on the inside is a whole nother level of trauma. Weariness, listen, is not a physical challenge, it's a soul challenge. And it's when you have lost your thrust and your drive and your passion. It is when you don't even want to get out of bed in the morning to do those things that you used to love to do that, that now you need some time to get back on rhythm so you need rest. Yeah. I'm talking to that neighbor to your right right now. I'm talking to them. And God is saying you need to learn how to unplug because solitude is about space to reflect. Solitude is about praying and thinking and listening and being still. Solitude heals weary souls. Souls that's been wrestling. Souls that's been going at a frantic pace. Souls, watch this, that have not had any uh, uh, rest in their lives. Souls that have had too much to bear and not enough time to recuperate. And, 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 and I want to share with you this example here in the Gospel of Mark of when Jesus had to unplug. See, when we walk through the Gospels, we discover that there's a thread that runs through the Gospels that's consistent in Jesus' life, and it's a thread of Jesus just disappearing. Jesus just, just escaping for solitude. Mark's Gospel reads uh, and tells us about this in chapter number one. The problem what I have with Mark's gospel is that Mark's gospel is a speed read. 
that you can get tired just from reading the first chapter of Mark because Mark, watch this, he don't waste time on details. Mark gets to all of the pertinent matters at hand. He, he gives you the meat and the potatoes of Jesus' life. He combines and pushes so many things together that you woe out just reading all the stuff Jesus did in chapter number one. The, the word that permeates throughout the gospel of Mark is the word that he used repetitively. It's the word, Glennis, immediately. And immediately Jesus did this. And immediately Jesus healed this particular person. It's such a fast-paced rendition of Jesus' life. Watch this. In chapter number one, you ain't got to go read it. Let me give it to you. He tells us that Jesus got baptized. In chapter number one, right after Jesus got baptized, he tells us Jesus called his and selected his 12 disciples. Right, right after he got baptized, he tells us, watch this, that Jesus teaches in the synagogue and confound the rulers and the synagogue uh, leaders of that day. It moves right on from there and tells us that Jesus now uh, is called to Simon's mother-in-law house because she had a fever. A fever. Take some time. A fever, right. A, a fever. So, so he goes there, he lays hands on Simon's mother-in-law, and she is restored. And then once that happens, the Bible says, read it in your own time, that they bring all of the sick and the demon-possessed to Jesus at night after that happened. And Jesus sits there for hours, and he heals every person that is sick. The Bible says, and he cast out every person that is demon-possessed. Jesus is working. And he sat there until everybody got their needs met. The whole town, the Bible says, gathered at the door to watch Jesus work. And Jesus was working from sunup to sundown, from teaching in the synagogue to healing Simon's mother-in-law to taking on all of the needs of the community. Jesus is, Jesus is dealing with all of these type of things. And some of you, this reads just like your life. You got a to-do list that's insane. It's one thing after another, it's one person after another person, one issue after another issue, one meeting after another meeting, one engagement after another engagement, one business matter after another business matter. Why? Because you're a hustler, and you're a go-getter, and you're a boss, and you him, and you're making it do what it do. But if you keep going at this pace, you're going to lose your soul. And Jesus, the Bible says, woke up early the next morning. I'm almost there. I'm on minute seven. Jesus woke up early the next morning. And the Bible says, while it was still dark, he left the house. He got away. He went to a solitary place. He unplugged. Because he says, y'all ain't going to work me to death. Come on, I need you to say that right now. Y'all ain't going to work me to death. Amen. Come, come on, come on, say it, say it. Come on, come on. Some of y'all need to go home, tell people in your house, y'all ain't about to work me to death. Amen. Praise God. Y'all pray, praise God, praise God. The other morning I went uh, in, the, in the kitchen and they had dishes all over the place. And I went to ask Trenise, I said, why nobody did the dishes last night? She says, I don't know, I cook. She said, y'all ain't going to work me to death. She said, now, nah, I, I, I cook. The least y'all Negroes can do is make sure the kitchen get clean after I cook. And I did all of this kind of stuff. See, see, some of y'all need to embrace your first lady spirit to say, I'm going to do my part, and I ain't doing nobody else's work. Say it again. Y'all ain't going to work me to death. Y'all ain't going to work me to death. No, no, no. Y'all ain't worried me to death. Y'all ain't worried about it. Look, look, look. It's interesting because, because Jesus got away. He went to pray. He, he, went to, he went to renew himself because he says, God, I don't want to quit on my assignment, so I can't get burnt out. So I got to take time to get away, to stay fresh, to keep my focus. He says, so let me unplug. See, and this is hard for some of you to unplug when you have bought into the notion that everybody needs you. You, you bought into that, that, that everybody needs you. No, 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 let me, let me dispel that lie. No, everybody doesn't need you. You need everybody to need you so that you can feel needed. 
No, you missed that. You missed that. Everybody that needs you, some of us have a dysfunction that you need everybody to need you so that you can feel needed because you don't know where to get your needs met at. Amen. And so you think by saying yes to everybody else that you are, you are satisfying everybody else. No, you need to understand no, no is a complete sentence. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking to somebody right now. No, I don't need to give no explanation. I don't need to give no excuse. When I say no, it's no. Amen. Why? Because I can't meet everybody else's need while my life falls apart. Don't you know your job will be posted before your obituary? Amen, praise God. You got to know how to shut some things down and say, nope, I'm not going to get caught up in the addiction to be needed. I'm going to unplug. And I will not be ashamed of doing so. Oh, no, y'all, y'all, y'all right there. Y'all, I feel somebody in this section right now not getting there. Say it, I'm going to unplug. And I will not be ashamed of doing so. Amen. Come on, say it again. I'm going to unplug, amen, and I will not be ashamed from doing so. I ain't about to write no 10-page letter that I'm about to take a sabbatical. I'm going to give you 10 days to notice I ain't here no more. Amen. Praise God. Because I need to unplug so I can keep my focus and my sanity. And look what happened. Look what happened. Look what happened. Look, look, look. Look what happened when Jesus left. The Bible says, and when they discovered he was gone, it's right there in verse 36. It says, when they discovered that he was gone, the Bible says they went looking for him. (laughs) Wait, y'all done worked the man all day yesterday, and now when he take a little vacation in verse number 36, the Bible says that he left, and, and they went looking for him. And when they found him, they said, Jesus, everybody looking for you. Let me tell you something. Write this down. This is going to help somebody. It's going to bless your year. See, takers have no boundaries, therefore givers must. That went over your head. I'm going to give it to you again. They kept on taking. They said, Jesus, we're going to keep on taking as long as you're going to give. And let me help you, many of you, because many of you, you have the spirit of a giver. You are very generous, but you got to have boundaries because takers have no boundary. They will keep taking as long as you keep giving and care nothing about how you are left. You have to know how to unplug. Hallelujah. Slap your neighbor right now. God is telling you to unplug. He's telling you to unplug. Why? Because as long as you stay on for everybody else, amen, you ain't going to have no time for yourself. You got to unplug. Takers have no boundaries. Therefore, you must. They said, Jesus, come on, give us some more. The Bible says they brought everybody that was sick. Everybody that was demon-possessed. And Jesus stayed there for hours healing and casting out demons. And he had had a long day, but nobody cared that Jesus didn't have sleep. Nobody cared that Jesus, watch this, may have been dealing with something in his personal life. We don't read one time in the text where anybody saying, Jesus, how you doing today? See, there's some people, they don't care about how you're doing. They only want to receive what it is that you give. And until you get the maturity to realize, number one, I ain't Jesus, and number two, even Jesus took a break, you're never going to be able to keep yourself healthy in the soul. See, it's maturity. Listen, because God is maturing us. It's maturity that causes us to embrace self-care. That if I don't care for myself, nobody else will. If I don't take care of my mental space, amen, praise God, nobody else ain't gonna care, amen, no, no, nobody, because let me tell you about people who give. People who give, don't nobody ask you, do you need anything? People who are strong, don't nobody ever ask you, do you need any encouragement? Do you need any building up? No, don't nobody. All they want to do is if you give it, I'm taking, baby. Look at the reply, and I'm almost there. Look, look at the reply. The reply is Jesus says, everybody looking for you, Jesus. See, and if, if Jesus was addicted to being needed, he would have went right back to the people that, that, that wanted to take more for him. But look what he told them. Jesus replied and says, come on, we're going somewhere else. I know they got needs there, but he says, 
my assignment there is done. See, it's only when you spend time in solitude with God where you can recognize what your next move is. You can recognize the things, watch this, that you are called to. Because Jesus was not about to satisfy an ego to stay in a place when God is saying, I'm calling you to somewhere else. So he had a lesson in solitude. Am I preaching to anybody that's in here right now? Yeah, I know, I know. I'm boring, y'all. It's the people online that the Lord is talking to this morning. I want to give you a few lessons from solitude, and we're going to pray. Lessons from solitude. Number one, in solitude, we learn freedom. Solitude is where you take back control of your world. You learn freedom. Freedom. You want some freedom? Turn their cell phone off for about eight hours. Mm -hmm. The freedom to own your emotions. The freedom, listen, we was talking about saying no. You know who the most difficult person to say no to? I'm going to tell you, the person that's going to act a fool when you tell them no, you. T tell yourself no. T tell yourself, listen, this week we're not going to eat before 12. Watch what yourself do. I'm talking about headaches, amen. You're going you to start, because you, you don't like to be told no, no, no. See, you got to learn how to take back control of your emotions when my emotions is not going to lead me to do stuff that's killing me. The freedom to manage your thoughts happens in solitude. Solitude is where we break free from addictions that we didn't even know we had. This is why the Sabbath was created. It was time to wash our souls from the things that held us up. And Jesus intentionally made time for solitude so he could stay in control. You know what else solitude teaches us? It's in solitude that we really learn our worth. We really know how much we're worth when we get before God in solitude. Because, see, there's a difference between your worth and your usefulness. Some people don't value because you're worthy to be valued. They, work, they value you because you are useful. You meet a need, yes, you, you, you're given something. And to, to some people, you're only worth something if you are giving them something, if you're useful. And our worth, you need to understand, goes far beyond your usefulness. It's beyond your works. It's beyond what you can supply for somebody else. Your value is not in what you can do. Your value is in who loves you. Your value is in the one who says, you know what? Silver and gold ain't enough to purchase you. I'm going to purchase you with my precious blood. Solitude teaches us how much we are worth to God. Because if you ever shut up and, 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 and lock everything else out, God will begin to speak to you like he's never spoken to you before. And you'll begin to hear him and he'll begin to affirm you and he'll begin to heal you and he'll begin to encourage you. But God said, you too busy for me. He said, but if you ever shut everything else out, I'll show you how much you're worth to me. Oh, God. That's why grandmother saying just a little talk with Jesus will make everything else all right because she understood the value of being in God's presence was worth more than anything else that you can experience in life. One day with God is worth a lifetime of the world's riches. He, he says, he, says he teach, solitude teaches us where we learn our worth. Number three, if you're writing, solitude is where we learn wholeness. Minister Bernard was talking about this in worship just a moment ago. I don't know if you caught that. Wholeness. See, the goal in life is not to be balanced. The goal is to be whole. Say it. Thank you for wholeness, God. Wholeness. Listen, wholeness is when all of me is healthy. Wholeness is not just when my money is good or when my body is good or when my relationship was good. Wholeness is nothing missing and nothing broken. Wholeness is when everything that's attached to me is healthy. Oh, God. And I want to speak something over your life right now to every person that's weary, to every person that want to quit, to every person that feel like, Bishop, I got a load on my back. God wants to make you whole so that everything in your life, watch this, can be healthy and produce as God desired for it to produce. I I need you to clap your hands right now for wholeness that God gives to us. 
see our toxic routines in life will cause us to begin to piece by piece unravel. Unravel. And we're looking at people and we say, oh, they got it going on. They got all this kind of stuff, but you don't even see it. They unravel it. They got this going on. They got all of this internal stuff that's just all over the place. That's why in this season, you got to be spiritual enough to look at somebody and not be fooled by the makeup, not be fooled by the nice clothes, not be fooled because they smelling good and looking good. Come on, you got you to gotta understand that, listen, baby, I want to make sure that you hold on the inside because I can't make a decision for somebody that just got external prosperity. I need you to have some internal prosperity in your life as well. Every part of us, God wants healthy and God wants whole. Solitude is where we learn wholeness. Can I give you the last one? I'm done. Solitude is where we receive revelation. It's where we receive revelation. You do know how important revelation is, right? That, that, that revelation is when God reveals his plan. It's where he reveals his will. It's where he reveals his purpose. Solitude is where we learn revelation. Jesus said, watch this, man shall not live by bread alone. Come on, somebody. That, that, but man has to, has to live by every word, every revelation that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, you're, you always live at the level of your revelation from God. Ah, but if you ain't heard God in a while, you stay on the level that God wants to bring you up from. But God says you got to sit yourself still so that you can hear what I'm saying and you can get a new revelation. Because when your revelation changed, your life changed. Jesus got a revelation. Jesus got the revelation, and the revelation was, don't go back there. I know they got a need. They had a need before I came. They're going to have a need after I leave. But my purpose is not to meet everybody's need. My purpose is to do what God has called me to do. And so God says, watch this, let's move and go somewhere else. And after Jesus spent time with God, he was able to refocus. He was able to get back on his assignment. And he was able to say, let's move on to the next city. God wants to take you somewhere. He wants to move you somewhere. But you got to hear the revelation of God that says it's time for you to go to your next assignment. Let's go, Jay. I'm done. Write this down. When you are useful, people will use you. But when you are focused, God can send you. I just said something right there. When you are useful, people will use you. But when you are focused, God can send you to the place that he has for you. The Bible says in Kings 17, I believe it is, that there was a famine in the land. But Elijah got before the Lord in solitude and in prayer, and God sent him to the brook of Cherith. And when he sent him, when he went where God told him to go, based on the revelation that God gave him in his time of solitude and his time of prayer, the Bible says he made sure ravens came to feed him. Why? Because when you're in the place where God wants you to be, God says, all of your needs now are my responsibility. When the brook dried up, when the brook dried up, what did he do? He says, God, I need another revelation. I need you to give, tell me what to do. Should I stay here? Should I move? The Bible says he got another revelation. He says, go to Zarephath. Y'all don't read your Bible. He says, and there's going to be a widow woman there. And that woman is going to take care, widow woman is going to take care of you. He says, when you go to her, tell her to bake you a cake. <laughs> he went there and the woman, watch this, says, listen, preacher, I understand what you're trying to do. You shiny shoe preacher, you, you're trying to come in here and get an offering. He says, no. She says, no. Uh, listen, if you bake me a cake first, you and your child are going to eat for many days. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, watch this, God had positioned that woman with an obedient spirit to say, yes, I'll do what God has told me to do through this prophet. And when she fed him, her and her son ate for many days. It was a revelation that she had and a revelation that Elijah had that allowed the abundance of God to meet every need. All I'm trying to tell y'all is, is that when you focus on what God has called you to do, every need is going to be met in your life. 
and every desire is going to be fulfilled. The problem is we put God last and we expect God to put us first. We find time for God when God makes time for us. God is telling us today it's time for some of us to unplug. To reset yourself. Because sometimes, listen, the warfare of quitting is not properly resting. Not properly, what's this, unplugging. Stand to your feet, I'm about to pray. I feel the Holy Spirit in this room today. Well, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. No matter what station of life you're in. Listen, if you're a leader in here right now, there's an addiction that's so easy for leaders to have, and that's the, the addiction to be needed and feel like you got to meet everybody's need and be there for everybody's problem and solve everybody's situation. And what you don't know is all of that ripping and running for everybody else is just causing you to be toxic on the inside. I was telling one of our deacons before church, I said, this is one thing when you're leading people you have to understand. I'm responsible to you, but I'm not responsible for you. They're going to make their own decisions. I don't care how much you fast and pray. You cannot eat for 117 days. People are going to do what they want to do. And you're around here losing weight, and they at the crawfish bar. I mean, I'm going to say, you, you fasting and praying and turning over your plate, they down at Strawberry Festival, like, give me another funnel cake. They don't, unless God touches their heart. Nothing that you do matters. You need to learn how to unplug. And guess what? When you unplug, God will handle. That's, that's the whole purpose of Sabbath, is trusting God with rest. Every hand is lifted now. Every hand is lifted. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, come on, just begin to thank God right there. Some of you right now, there's some things right now God says you need to give to him. You cannot take it back to the car. Come on, I want you to open up your mouth right now and say, God, I give it to you this morning. I thank you for leading me to church this morning. I was, I, I was debating on whether I was coming or not, but now I know why I was here because there's some things I got to give to you. I got to just unplug. I got to lay it at the altar, and I got to leave it right there. Yes, God. Why? Because, God, you don't want me to quit before my time. Oh, God. You, you, you don't want me to give up on something that you've called me to do, and, and unless I know how to unplug, unless I know how to say no, unless I know how to embrace solitude and silence so that I can get myself together, I'll never be useful for you, God. Father, come on, lift your hands right now. Somebody needs their focus back. They've lost their spiritual north. Yes, Lord God, they've lost their center, Lord God. And I pray even on today as your word was going forth that we learn a lesson from our Savior that even though he was God and man, that he had to break away, Lord God, so that he can refocus, so that he can stay on pace with what it is that you were calling and assigning him to do. I pray the same thing for every person that's here in this place today. That, Lord, we've been ripping and running. We've been doing this and we've been doing that, Lord God, and part of our soul has been torn. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. P part of our soul has been wounded and itched, injured, Lord God. Some of us have had to deal with tragedy and trauma and loss and keep on going, but God, I thank you that we're going to learn that we got to sit down somewhere and we got to let the Spirit of God minister to us, Lord God, so that we can be whole and ready for you, meet for the Master's use and prepare for every good work. I speak it now over every life today, Lord. Refresh us now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. Rejuvenate our soul right now. Give somebody their drive back, their passion back, Lord God. Give somebody their, their, their alignment today, Lord God, so they can get back in step with your will for their life, Lord God. And everything that we can't change, we trust you to change. And everything that we can't impact, we trust you to impact. And everything, Lord God, that's above our pay grade, we thank you that nothing is above you, Lord God. We love you today and we thank you, Lord. Who for letting us know we can't quit now. Rest if we must, but we can't quit. No, Lord God, yes. 
sit down for a little while if we have to, Lord, but we can't quit, Lord God. We can stay delayed. We can delay a little bit, Lord God, but, but we can't quit. I, I come against a quitter's spirit today, Lord God, and I speak resilience right now, Lord God. I speak a pick your head back up again spirit, Lord God. I speak a bounce back spirit in you, Lord God, that everything that was knocked out of us through the tr hustle and bustle of life, Lord God, you're restoring it to us, Lord God. We're not going to walk around suicidal, Lord God. We're not going to walk around quitting on our destiny in you, Lord God, but we're going to learn how to trust you by resting. Hallelujah. Lay hands on the shoulder of the person that's next to you that's in front of you right now. Hallelujah. Father, I pray now, yes, in this ministry, Lord God, and every person that's in this ministry right now, I know it's just second quarter, but I pray a refreshing over them right now in the name of Jesus. Can you pray that for your neighbor right now? Come on. They're so generous that they keep on giving. They keep on giving. They keep on giving. They keep on giving. Come on, pray that God would return it back to them now. Yes. Pray, pray right now that everything they're giving away, God, God's going to return it back to them in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Every time they stayed up late and every time, Lord God, they was working to get this done and get that done and take care of this person and take care of that person. Person, Lord God, I pray right now that you would give them wholeness, Lord, where every part of them will be healthy, Lord God. Every part of them will be functioning in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. They're going to be a functioning father, hallelujah. They're going to be a functioning mother, Lord God. They're going to be a functioning part of the body of Christ, Lord God. They're going to be a functioning husband, Lord God. A functioning wife, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for wholeness. And we receive it now. It's in Jesus' life-changing name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Our leaders are coming to the altar, but put those blessed hands together all over the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you give God a wave offering? I just feel such a presence, such a renewal today. Yes. Yes. You can't be your best self when you're tired. You can't give the best of you when you got a toxic soul. So I pray today that we would take care of this soul that God has given unto us. Because listen, when the soul gets damaged, there's not an amount of rest, there's not an amount of vacation, there's not an amount of sleep that can heal you. It's only when God can restore our soul. But let me tell you what God will do. He will heal every wound and he will mend every broken heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're here today, listen, and perhaps you're weary and you're stressed because you've disconnected, not from the hustle and the bustle, but you're disconnected from God. You say, man, man, if I just go over here and do it myself, I can get it done. And God says, no, I'm the source of your supply. And you're here today and you say, God, today I want to unplug from some stuff I need to unplug from, but I want to plug back into you. If that's you today, I want to pray for you that as you would make that decision to plug back into God, God says, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just trying to show you where your help comes from. If you're here today and you say, that's me, Bishop. You, you, you got me. You hit me right square between the eyes. I need to come back to God. I need to plug back into him. If that's you, I want you to come. I want you to stand at this altar. Today, there's going to be a renewal that happens in your life. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, excuse me. I got to get there. I got to get there. I got to plug back in. I got to plug back in. Come on. I got to plug back in. Come on, somebody else, the Lord is talking to you. Yeah, tell your neighbor, excuse me, I got to plug back in. I got to plug back in because I know where my help comes from. I got to plug back in. Yes, yes, they're still coming. Come on, clap your hands. They're still coming. You got to plug back in. There's people that need you, but they can't get the best of you if you're broken and you're wounded in your soul. Secondly, there's those of you in here today that never plugged in. You've never seriously invited Jesus into your heart and said, God, you know what? I take my hand off the wheel. Your will is what I want for my life. And today, I want to give my life to you and say, God, do with me as you, as you will. Listen, when you do this now, there's so much that comes <laughs> with that. God says, what happens is when you accept Jesus, you now become a part of the family of God. When you accept Jesus now, you receive what's called the firstborn blessing. 
When, when, you, when, you, when you give your life to Jesus now, God says, I begin to love you unconditionally. Not because of you being so good, but because of what Jesus did was so complete on the cross. If that's you today all over the house of the Lord and you say, I need to plug into Jesus. I'm doing it for real this time. I want you to come today. Today you're going to get saved. Amen. Today you're going to give your life to God. And today you're going to become a new being. And all things are going to become new in your life. If that's you today, listen. Amen. The Spirit of God, I want you to come and stand here at the altar. When I pray for these, I'm going to pray for you as well. There's somebody right now that needs to give God a yes. Hallelujah. I want you to come. Amen. I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Third and finally, you're here today and you need a church. You need to be connected to other believers, a congregation, an assembly, a community where you can grow in faith. You know how we grow? The Bible says iron sharpens iron. You got to get around other people, man, to grow. You can't stay isolated. The isolation is the work of the devil. You're here today and, and you say, man, I know God is calling me to connect with this church. This is where I'm supposed to be. You receive that revelation. I want you to come today. We're going to welcome you home. Amen. We're going to welcome you to where you're supposed to be. Is there anybody now that needs to give God a yes in that regard? I want you to come wherever you are in the sanctuary. Amen. And stand here. And I'm going to have a word of prayer with you. Amen. I'll wait for you. I know this is, the devil ain't just letting you go. Amen. You got to make it up in your mind. I'm going because I know this is what God is speaking to me. Amen. And I want you to come and I want you to stand right here. And I'm going to have a word of prayer with you. And today you're going to walk into newness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Who's the Lord talking to all over the house of the Lord today? You strayed away and you need to plug back in. You never plugged in and today you're plugging in for the first time. Or well, third and finally, I'm going to connect with my family. Amen. Where I can begin to grow and develop in the things of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Would you stretch your hands here? I thank God for these who have come today, these men and these women, telling God, I'm plugging in. I'm getting back on the path. And you know what happens when you make it up in your mind that you're going to plug in, that you're going back to God? This is what he does. He puts the ring back up on your finger. And he puts the robe of royalty back up on your back. God says, watch this. I didn't leave you. You left me. But your, your position remains. Amen. Your position remains. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these who've come. One of them are standing for one thing and others are standing for something else. But God, you know every individual situation that's at this altar. And I thank you and I bless you today that by your spirit, you drew them out of the crowd. And for such a time as this, you called them to this prayer, to this time of consecration, Lord God. So I pray today if there's any guilt or shame that you're going to remove that. We curse the enemy trying to, trying to make us feel shamed and guilty and embarrassed because we, we went astray. We thank you, Lord, that, that you came and got us and you brought us back. And you told us that we was worth something, Lord God. So now, Lord God, I thank you and I bless you for what you're going to do in their life for giving you a yes now. I pray now, Lord, they're going to receive revelation. They're going to understand wholeness. They're going to know their worth, Lord God. We give you love. We give you glory, honor, and praise for your love this morning in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, clap your hands all over the building. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, one more act of obedience to all of you who come. I know some of you came for one thing, others came for something else. Would you go to my right? Amen. Elder Williams is going to lead you in the back, give you some information. Can you clap like this, your uncle? Come on, can you clap like this, your, your daughter? Amen. Your wife.